All right, we'll get started. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Jeff Hammond. I'm with a group called Birch Transportation. We are a uh, consultant for the Nashville Department of Transportation, NDOT, which is Nashville's newest department. Uh, it is the old public works department uh, minus trash pickup. <laughs> That's how I think of it. It's, uh, but NDOT has oversight of all of the activities in the right-of-way, streets, street operations, uh, all of the things that uh, you, you think of and, and with roads and transportation, they do it. And so this is one program that NDOT administers. It's called the Neighborhood Street um, Traffic Calming Program. Um, how many of you got a little card to be here tonight? Okay several of you. Um, we've changed the way we do some things. This used to be very much a neighbor-driven uh, process. We've we sent, sent, started sending those cards and trying to do more of a metro-driven process, put a, a little more uh, standardization behind it. It's, it's working really well. This neighborhood was just selected uh, recently. Um, you, uh, back in uh, August, we announced those, or back in uh, July, we announced these. And um, and so we're here to, to kind of kick kick this off and, and get started. Um, I think that's all of the upfront stuff I have. So what I'm going to do is is cover a couple of uh, cover cover a couple of things, a little bit about the program leading off, and then we're going to look at some of the tools that we have in our traffic calming toolbox. And then uh, I'm going to the main the main event, as it were, is showing you what what our preliminary plan is for Kennedy Avenue. And then certainly want to hear uh, your your thoughts on that, and we'll talk about next steps and all from that. But just briefly, a little bit about the program. If you're not familiar, this uh, is the traffic calming program, and and we like to think of traffic calming as being in three E's, and really speed management in general. So we've got the uh, education component, just making sure people are aware of you know the impact of how they drive on neighborhoods and those types of things. You've got enforcement, which is a big one, and people all the time say, why can't we just get a, a police cruiser out here and sit and write tickets? And that, that might be exactly what you need. I don't know. It's, uh, uh, it has, it's very effective for the time that they are there, but when they leave, it doesn't take long for things to revert back and get to where they are. Besides that, uh, MNPD has got a, got a few things to do, and so they don't have a lot of resources to sit and, and uh, you know, um, uh, dedicate towards traffic enforcement. So where NDOT comes in is on the engineering side of it, um, changing um, infrastructure, putting things in the street that might uh, facilitate uh, better driving behavior. And so that's what this, fo this program focuses on. This is a residential street program. Um, we we uh, try to stay uh, steer clear of more commercial areas and those types of things. Uh, we do focus on physical solutions. Uh, we're not so much in that education camp, camp although we do have a few tools that, that um, kind of lead towards that. But but we find putting things in the street have the most impact. Um, uh, we are focused on reducing speeds as opposed to some people think of traffic calming as trying to keep traffic out of your neighborhood. That's very difficult to do, plus the traffic's got to go somewhere. So we're not about trying to take traffic off of one street and push it onto another one. We, we try to design around that uh, type of phenomenon. But it's not always perfect. It's very difficult to control how people, you know, perceive their route uh, through the city. And, uh, you know, and then you got tools like Waze and Google Maps and things that are, that are diverting traffic uh, in, through their technology. But so we really focus on keeping traffic generally the pattern it's taken, but just slowing it down and getting it to uh, to behave responsibly when they are in these neighborhood uh, contexts. And then we don't look at spot locations. We're we're trying to encourage lower uh, travel over the length of the entire street. Um, speaking of streets, we one of the changes that we recently made is we used to be more of a neighborhood program, so um, people would apply in, and this this neighborhood's a good example. Um, the application came in for this neighborhood, I think it was 2019. You probably know, it's, it's been a while. Uh, yeah, the, the positive thing about that is, I, I tell people, well, at least, at least Metro didn't forget about you. You know, we said, we said if, you don't, if you don't get it the first time, we'll keep you in the program, and this is a good case in point. We did do that, and it got to the point where it was in the, in the top tier of streets that need attention. But we don't we don't uh, any longer come in and, and look at 
look at the whole neighborhood. We focus on the data and the data points to one or two streets, and, and that's what we focus on. And, and we can talk more about that, but, uh, but that's where we are now. Um, uh, I think all that stuff is, is good. It is a, that, that last bullet there, it is a very uh, high, high demand program. We'll look at, look at that in just a second. Um, we like to put these other uh, contacts and resources up there because when we talk about traffic calming, we're pretty focused on just slowing traffic down. A lot of people will ask about, can we put always stops in or can we get a, a sidewalk or a bike lane? And, and we're just not the program to do that. Those have different uh, methods to go about those things. Hub Nashville is a great place always to start for anything. You can do all of those things and, and many others just by going to hub.nashville.gov and, uh, and, and putting your request in there. And that's not just NDOT activity, that's all Metro activity. Good evening, hey, Council Woman, good to see you. We are. We're. We are. Uh, uh, we're. Councilwoman Benedict just came in, and so we are both here in the room and virtual. So if you want to, if you want to make some announcements or anything, yeah, go right ahead. Go through your. Okay. Hey, thanks everybody. I'm sorry to be a little late, running all over town tonight, but this is one of three meetings this week that we're having about traffic calming in District Seven, which is. Pretty phenomenal. Um, we've also got a project that we've been working on since last fall that we're relaunching. And there have been 24 projects this particular round that have been announced citywide. And the fact that we have three here in District 7 is pretty big. So I'm here to push and get a few more for us ASAP. The very next one in line, somebody always has to, has to be right behind the cutoff. And the very next one is for us. So um, it's McAlpine, and I don't want to say that they're guaranteed to be next, but they certainly are next in line. This is the number one priority that I hear about from everybody in our district is traffic calming, slowed on cars, people are going to get hit, people are going to get killed, uh, students, parents walking to school. Traffic calming, the neighborhood street traffic calming program that we're talking about tonight for Kennedy Avenue and that we talked about yesterday about RD Avenue and we talked about two days before that Emma Avenue. Um, and again, last fall, um, Lytton Avenue and Burn Street those are all streets that we need people to slow down on. And you're going to hear from me that in the next couple of weeks, I've been working like crazy. I'm not quite there yet. I can't wait to announce it, but it's going to be in a couple of weeks. We're going to see a traffic calming announcement for the entire neighborhood. That's going to include enforcement. I know everybody wants to hear, hey, yeah, sure, you're going to get speed humps. Hey, yeah, sure, we're going to do these things to the street. But what are we going to do to make sure people follow the law? You know, a speed trailer is great and it shows you, hey, here's the speed you're going, but it doesn't record it. We're going to actually have officers on the street who are going to report to me how many stops they've had and how many tickets they've given. Now, you know what? Might not be many at all, but if we don't know how many they're given, we don't know that any are given. And so, that also is one thing you're going to hear. Jeff, I'm going way off topic here. All right. But that's one thing that you're going to hear from me is that if you don't tell us about a speeding driver in your neighborhood to the city, that does not exist. If you don't tell us that something has happened that the city hasn't seen happen, if you don't report that to us through the hub, we don't know it's happened. I like to say that in the world that I've always worked in is that if it's not measured, it doesn't exist. So if you don't tell us what you see out there, and it doesn't matter if you know a license plate or not. If you have a photo or something that says, this speeding has happened, this whatever, you know, run through the four-way or three-way stop has happened, report it through hub. I know they just, I know it's the slide that's up right now, Report it through HUB, even if you have no data, just no license plate, but you've just seen somebody speed through the intersection, let us know. Because if you don't let us know, 
It's data we don't have. It's data that doesn't help us put a solution in place. We're gonna put one in place on, on uh, Kennedy here is what we're about tonight. It's a small street. We're looking at one last night we talked about on RD. We're, tooken, we're talking about one on Monday night for Emma Avenue. Those two streets are huge. They're gonna have massive impacts. They're gonna have either a lot of speed humps or some other solution. With Kennedy, this is one of the streets that takes folks from Stratford to Dan Mills. And it's crazy there every day. And it's crazy every day. And I was out there in the first couple of days of the school year this year telling folks, slow down, you can't park here. And guess what I got in return? <laughs> the same thing we've all gotten in return sometimes with a one finger salute. Most of them speed up. And I have had that happen to me. We've got to stop it. The number one way we're going to stop that is by changing our own personal behavior and helping other people change their personal behavior. If the speed limit is 25, don't go more than 25. I get honked at. I've got pretty thick skin, not everybody does. Drive 30 in a 30. I was on Gallatin driving the fastest car on the street yesterday on Gallatin and I was going 37. You do not know how happy I was about that. But I'm bragging about it right now. And Jeff is like, Emily, I've known you. I've known you a long time and you're happy about this and I'm happy about this. And I'm really excited to get something done on Kennedy and it's one of many we're gonna get done. It's a small stretch. I think we can get it done. I hope that there's not people in opposition. I hope that we get something done and we slow folks down because nobody sh should be put in harm's way because of unsafe streets. So I'm gonna turn it back over to the engineers and thank you for everybody being here. Well, thank you. And uh, uh, Emily's been a tremendous proponent for the traffic calming program and a lot of council members have. It is a well-funded program. It's very supported. And I think it's because we get such feedback and turn out like this, you know, when we come out to do projects. So um, picking back up, it is very much in high demand and, and just a couple of statistics in, in the, um, the, uh, the class that you all were in, we have, we still, and we kind of carry these as we pointed out, we roll these over, but we still got north of 400 streets that have applied into this program. Kennedy is one of those. So it's, it's just a lot of folks that are having similar experiences that you all have, unfortunately, uh, with traffic in the neighborhood. We do look at data to select these, um, and, and it is a four, four pronged approach to, to the data. We, we, I kind of roughly say it's 70, 30 safety data versus uh, kind of access mobility data. So the 70, 30 is split between the actual speed that we collect on the street and the number of crashes that have occurred on the street. We look at those two things, that's the bulk of our score. The rest of it is made up with um, things like, are there walking destinations like schools, like parks? And then also along with that, uh, the, the active transportation is, what accommodations do you have? You actually score higher in the program if you don't have sidewalks. So that would have uh, you know, helped Kennedy in that situation. So it just makes sense. If you don't have those accommodations, you're, you're, you need, we figure you need traffic calming more uh, than if you do. So that's how the, the data comes up. Um, Specific to this neighborhood, um, Kennedy was not the only thing that was applied for. We also had uh, Howard and McChesney, kind of the little island there that comes right off of, of uh, Gallatin Road and over to Kennedy. Uh, but when we collect that data, Kennedy was the one that rose to the top. That may be surprising to you, it may not. I'll, I'll tell you one, one aspect to this data that kind of drove Kennedy a little bit, I think. It is narrow, the section that we're talking about. It does have a much lower speed limit. So the speeds were not as high as other places. You, that probably doesn't surprise you on Kennedy because it is very narrow. But when you look at that differential between speeds and what is really safe to travel on Kennedy, that's what put it up because 29 miles an hour, I think, is was the, the 85th percentile. That feels pretty fast on that street. That doesn't feel fast on a lot of streets, but that's that's moving. That's moving when the street is as narrow as it is. Yeah, exactly. When when two cars can't go alongside each other, it, that feels very fast. So that's why we're here talking about that street. Uh, here's a here's a map of of the area. I'm 
pretty sure you guys know it pretty well. Uh, but this, the section that we're looking at is here on Kennedy from Greenfield up to Stratford. It's that short segment. I know it was just paved. Um, that's kind of good for us, actually. We're sort of hitting this at a good time. Uh, and then these are the other streets that were applied for. I left these purple and red lines on here. They're important because um, those, those are identified as part of Metro's major and collector street plan, just meaning what is probably already intuitive to you, Greenfield and Stratford are classified by the city a little bit differently. They're called collectors, just meaning they um, carry more traffic, they are meant to carry more traffic, um, and uh, generally those have a little bit higher speed limit. Uh, you may remember um, about two years ago, Metro changed all the speed limits in residential areas down to 25. It had always been 30, changed down to 25. Those did not change by that ordinance. So um, collectors are a little bit different. Gallatin, of course, is even a higher classification called an arterial. We're not to the point where we're doing traffic calming by and large on collectors and arterials. Uh, and so, uh, anyway, for what it's worth, that's the other colors on that map. But Kennedy Avenue is is the, the street that we're looking at. Uh, a few of the tools in our toolbox. Uh, this is tool number one, and in most neighborhoods, and this is going to be true in, in this neighborhood as well, this is kind of the bread and butter. This is what we're looking at. And a lot of people, when they think traffic calming, they're thinking this is the speed hump program. <laughs> that's, that's not that's not wrong uh, to think that because that's that's an awful lot of what we do, and we do that because um, for a couple of reasons. One, um, we're very we're very um, accustomed to them. We know how they perform. We use the same vendor. We know the product that we're getting. We know how it holds up. We know how traffic behaves over it. Um, and secondly, we know that it is very effective. Uh, there are different configurations to these, but um, the the standard go to. Uh, is very effective and will bring traffic down to about 15 or 20 miles an hour. Uh, and then when we place those, uh, you know, according to our, our methods, we can sustain that over a, a longer distance of the street. We call them speed cushions uh, just because they look like little pillows laying in the street, I suppose. And we they have these brakes in them uh, for the reason that you see on the right there. Um, emergency equipment, if they can't totally straddle it, and many can't, these are tapered on the side. You may can see it, it, it kind of tapers off there. And so they can at least, they're at least, their wider wheelbases of those vehicles are more out to the edge of that thing. So they're not as impacted by the speed cushion as, as some of your smaller cars would be. So that's, that's the reason we like those. Um, um, this, this gets to some of the idea about education. We do use the, these radar feedbacks some, uh, we're still collecting data on, on the long-term effectiveness of those. Again, that's something that we know works. It's kind of like the speed trailer. Uh, you know, that's good for a short time. And then when it leaves, at some point, traffic goes back to normal um, and not in a good way. Uh, and then markings uh, also, we've done some creative things with markings, some zigzag patterns just to try and bring attention to some uh, acute issues like a, a crosswalk or something like that. But more than often, what we use striping to do is to, to artificially narrow the street. We know that the wider the street is and the farther the houses are set back off of that street, the higher the tendency it is to go fast. And so uh, this is a little bit of anomaly in that y'all are a closer in neighborhood. We do a lot of this work in suburban areas. So I think for that reason, you know, their, their houses are further back off the road and it's just easier to go fast. Um, this street is not that way, so we wouldn't be looking at any, yeah, we don't, no more narrowing than what it already is on this one. Speed tables is just a different configuration from the, the speed cushions, although it operates generally the same way. You, you When you're driving, you have to ramp up on this thing, you level off on the top and come down. We use these um, for higher traffic volume locations in places where, you know, 15 to 20 may not be as appropriate as 20 to 25 or 30 miles an hour. And so we'll use these on a little bit higher uh, streets with, with higher traffic on them. Traffic circles we've done a few times. Um, I, I will say that, and, and they, they are effective. You do have to slow down to navigate around that circle. It's not something you drive over, you drive around it. Um, they do have some, uh, I guess I would say unintended consequences. School buses aren't, don't have the easiest time with them, and school buses aren't, you know, a lot of these streets. 
Uh, and then sometimes just the, the understandability of, of encountering this thing if you don't live on the street for the first time. And some people think they turn in front of it. Some people, they do it like a roundabout and go all the way around. And so it, it's, it's uh, just something that takes some getting used to. And, and the conditions have to be uh, pretty right for that to, uh, to be a good measure. And then we've got one that we uh, haven't done in quite some time. There are a couple of streets in Nashville actually that have this, but uh, uh, chicanes are again, an artificial way to simulate like you would have a parked car, you know, on a very urban street, like you may have in East Nashville or Germantown or somewhere where you've got cars pretty consistently parked on the street. This sort of replicates that and you do a, a zigzag or serpentine path in through all of that stuff. So. Uh, one more slide just about the, the process. We're here uh, at meeting one, and uh, we'll be talking about the design here. Um, there, there is, I think we've generally settled that there will be a meeting two, will be very similar to this meeting. If there are a lot of uh, discussions about the design, that's a good point to bring that back to you and say, here's, you know, here's what we've come up with or whatever. Uh, and then once we settle on that design, uh, and, and we're comfortable that the neighborhood has had a chance to weigh in on that, we go to an online ballot. Now, I'll end uh, tonight by talking a little bit more about that, um, and then we go to construction from there. So uh, I've got my information up here as well as Gil Thomas. Mr. Thomas is our program manager there with Metro, um, and so uh, we're fortunate. We can, we, the consultants, we can kind of split and divide and conquer, but there's just one of Gil, so he doesn't come to every meeting and, and we're able to split these up, but um, we've got that information there. So let me show you the plan, or, or I'll stop. Are there, are there any questions about the process or um, anything where we're, where we're headed? We, we can come back to that at the end if you like, but um, this is a short street. It's uh, I think a little less than 1,500 feet from Greenfield to Stratford. Um, there's a little bit of topography. Y'all know it kind of goes down and then comes back up, but we've, we've driven that. We've made some um, grade measurements. None of that would preclude us from using speed cushions or anything uh, wherever we need to. And so what we, have, what we have proposed, if you can't see, is two different sets of double speed cushions, one just north of Jake's, and one just south of Howard. And we come up with that by looking at these two control points. We know, you know, when you turn on the Greenfield, or turn off of Greenfield on to Kennedy, or you come to the four-way stop and turn on to Kennedy from Stratford, those are kind of stop points. That's what we, we control off of. And so then we're looking for a four, about a four to 600 foot spacing in between these sets of speed cushions. And we know that when you turn off of there, um, you know that's that's not enough room. Uh, generally speaking, it's not it's not it's not foolproof, but generally speaking, traffic will slow down for that, and that's not enough distance for them to ramp back up before they encounter the next one. Uh, so that's how we space that, um, and so that's that's the plan. That's a that's about as simple as they as they get, uh, given that it's not a very a long stretch here, and uh, and, and it's pretty straight straightforward street. I know you got comments on this. So go ahead. <laughs> Every, everybody does. This is where the comments come. First of all, there's never been a bicycle on that street in 30 years. And we do not want that space in between if it will just allow people to. Well, tell, tell me why. Tell me about some space. On the street right where you're going to place those speed cushions, there are several uh, fire trucks that do that. Yeah, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, they would have to to service the house that they're on the street. I mean, uh, but, well, but, but the rare, that is a rare case. Well, it, I mean, everyone's from miles from the street. Yeah. Uh, so you want the space between us? But it's not. Uh, so that's not going to slow a lot of people down. We'll just go between. No, you can't. So let me explain a little bit. Yeah, that's that. that uh, let me explain a little bit. So there's been a question about, again, I'm repeating for the computer, there's been a question about the spacing of that. And, and so the, these are six feet wide. So a normal car is, is somewhere, it's uh, about five feet wide. Uh, that's all the way from end to end. The wheels are set in a little bit narrower than that. So I drive a full-size Chevy Silverado and, and, and I can't 
straddle that. I can't get all the way to the outside. I hit it. And then, and then we space these such that if you move over, um, you can either put a wheel here and a wheel here, or you can put a wheel here and a wheel here, or a wheel here. You, you can't, you can't not hit something. Yeah. So that's how we space those. That that may look like a wider difference, or it may look like you could go right across that, but you you cannot. I would also guess given how narrow the street is, I mean they're going to be. You can fit there. two. Um, we can fit two. The street is about 16 feet wide. It, not in all places. It gets wider. That's that's a that's in one of the narrower spots, or or that's where we measured for the the, the cushions. Uh, I've measured it at right in this area on both places, and so yes, these are six these are six feet wide, so we can get two. It won't be it'll be maybe a foot in between them, and not much on each side, but we can get two in there, and and we really need to because one is is I mean we'd have like five feet, one wouldn't do it. Well, so we we do need to get to not enough numbers. Okay. The one of the reasons. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we walk our dogs, both of us here, out there every single day, twice a day. And I can point at the 10 mile an hour stop speed sign. People laugh at you. They do not slow down. Unless you give them something, they have to slow down. No. It's just not going to make any difference. And they don't stop before they turn into the street either. I, no. I hit last night. Not on yeah. that. Coming at all. They don't stop. Greenfield. Yeah, they don't. They just, I mean, they come off the riverside or they come back and they just, I mean, they swing around the corner and they even stay on the street. It's dramatic. Like, when I'm walking down Greenfield, okay, and I'm going across Kennedy, they're coming up that hill at, you know, where they're not even going to stop until they get to the stop sign. So I have to, like, either walk really fast across there because I don't know if people are going to stop or not. It's just, it's just, all the way, you know, it's, okay. yeah, it's, it's so, so we've had we've had several comments about two sets not being enough to span the distance of the street. You need to make it uncomfortable for people to be on that street. Okay. Can you give us an idea, like, if they hit the cushion going 50 miles an hour, <laughs> what, is, what does that do to their car? <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, if they hit it at 50, what does it do? Uh, um, I, I would hate to hazard a guess. I, 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 I have not. I don't know. My point is that my point is to say that if you were going to make that a point is to say that if you were to go to an area, and we need more of these. Don't get me wrong, but if you wonder what it's going to feel like to hit these at a high speed. There are streets that we can share with you where these are and that you're welcome to try to hit them. Please, God, don't do it at a high speed, but do it at a low speed and feel what that feels like. And if you think that if you think that you could actually go 30 in that 25 mile zone or in this case, 20 in a 10, you're it's my point is that if you think you can go 30 in a 25, 40 in a 30 or 35, 20 and a 10, if you hit these at that speed, you will understand how it's going to jar you, and you will understand that truly a speed cushion, although at three inches is a significant amount for your wheels to hit. I don't, I, I'm, I'm thinking about, and this is terrible, my cat brought home a mouse over to mole overnight and I looked at it and it was about this big and if I hit it, I would have thought I didn't feel anything. But truly, and this is, I mean, if you don't want to go check out a speed cushion, think about if you ever have hit a squirrel or a possum. How does that feel? That's three, a, a possum in particular is three inches, right? You feel the kadunk kadunk. And that's just one of your wheels. Where is the closest one around? Yeah, Madison Boulevard, as I was gonna say, is kind of the, we don't have many we don't have any speed humps in all of district seven 
Well, no, we do have chicanes down in Kirkland. We do have so, we do have some other things. But in Madison, there were some. Uh, so let me back up and answer that question with something off topic. The city has not funded the neighborhood street traffic calming program in years. After we had that horrible but important tax increase in 2020, we have now been able to fund these. The city has had 48 awards and District 7 has had four of them. There's 35 districts. We have had, quite frankly, more than our fair share. However, in my opinion, less than our fair share. I hope you understand what that means. We need more, but we are getting more than most neighborhoods in the city. Having said that, there are others that were approved prior to now there are others that exist prior to now that um, one of which is on, I believe it's Madison Boulevard. If you go down, if you drive north on Gallatin Pike, you take a right at Neely's Bend Road. If you take a left, I believe on Madison Boulevard it is, if not Idlewild, one of the two. On the left, on the take, go, so east down Neely's Bend Road, north down Idlewild or Madison Boulevard, you will find these speed humps. And you will see, and that's a project that was awarded in about 2018 or 2019. Drive over those, please. Drive over those at the speed limit there. Feel free to make a U-turn. Drive over those slower at 10. Drive over those faster at 30. And at 25, I encourage you to try it. Good luck. Have fun. <laughs> make sure you've got a margarita ready to shake while you're in the car because that's how it's going to feel when you're going over that. That's how this is going to feel. This is three inches in the air. This is, um, it's effective. It's, we're looking at do it, doing it on the entire length of RD in different places. We're looking at doing it on the entire length of Emmett Avenue. If you're interested in understanding that, the fact that we can do this on a small street like Kennedy is going to slow folks down. We could put in six or seven or eight it's not gonna be effective. People will just divert themselves in other ways. This is going to help people say, we can still use this street, but we're not going to use it at 40 miles an hour. We're gonna slow down. And in my opinion, I've looked at, so like I said, we've got four of these active right now. We've got three, this is the third meeting this week that I've had about these. And speed humps have been the solution on all, in all three of those meetings. I'm not suggesting that the other two is the right thing, I think it is. But it, there's still feedback from the community and I'm here to listen to feedback from you. If this isn't right, tell us this isn't right. But if you think that two speed humps on this stretch is going to help people stop speeding from Greenfield to Dan Mills, this is the street that cuts through from Greenfield to Dan Mills. This is going to help people slow down. And by the way, I spent the first two days of the school year at Dan Mills and people need training about how it is to take your kids to school, about how it is to drive around our schools. Yeah, the worst this is day, one the way. Taking their kids to school. They That's right. And they that. don't. And they don't slow down. You're exactly right, Maggie. They don't slow down for walkers. What will make them slow down are a few things, traffic calming um, implements like this are one. Other things are enforcement. I'm about to announce a plan. I think there's half a dozen, at least not, at least not more, who have heard me talk about this plan I'm about to introduce. It's going to include enforcement and, re and reporting on enforcement. It's going to include education. It's going to include things like traffic calming, like these measures. The fact that we have four out of 48 three out of 24 lately, the most recent award. We're getting it done around here, y'all. This is needed, we're getting it done. Is it fast enough? Well, I'm about to say GD and hell no, right? So it's not, I want this more, but this is an improvement. This is a street that needs it. I hope that you'll adopt it's, it's a very inexpensive and successful way for us to take care of this one street. Is it needed outside of here? 
Absolutely. But please don't lose the focus of the greater for what we can do right now. We can do this right now. And we can do others later. But let's make sure we take care of this one right now. Please support it. Please help let your neighbors sign up for it and support it. There's going to be an online survey. A really huge change from the last time. Like, let me back up. We've been working on a traffic calming application on all of Lytton and all of Burns in South Inglewood. We have required, up till now, we have required 70% of property owners to say yes to this. Guess how many landlords there are in that street? Okay. Guess how many property owners are on that street? Guess how many we can reach? Guess how many say yes? It's a huge threshold for us. The new program requires 60, two thirds, 66%, 67% of people who respond to the survey. If five people in this room say yes, and one person says no, guess what? We've won, the speed humps are coming. So that's a huge difference. And, what, and we don't have a tremendous amount of property owners here. We just need those folks who will say yes, there's nobody that's going to say no, but I know. Then let's just call the meeting to an end, and the answer is yes, and we've got it done. Because literally, truly, like, yeah. It's not enough. You need three. You need one up there by and, and so that's, Mary, that's important feedback. I want everybody to know that this is a great solution for a small area, and we can get it done. And I'm going to turn it back over to you. Well, I'll stay up here with you, Jen. No, uh, just like one small thing, like uh, a refill going on the Kennedy and get on the center. A lot of people cut that really short. Yep. And like, if we get some paint or some clear indication of like how far our engine can move up before we get on the turn, a refill going on the Kennedy. So they're turning and left yeah, here. With that, really tight. Okay. And I don't know what the difference is. Like, so, um, and so they need they need to be they need to. That's her, it's, Okay. Cool. And so okay. if we can come up with a way to uh, maybe fold that out or something. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a sidewalk that that. Okay, that's good feedback. So they do just get the two. Are you sold on those specific locations or will you go in and study it a bit more? Um, question is, are, are these the locations? Typically, they are just because we've looked at it and said, this, this optimally is spacing. Obviously, that's not very precise. You know, you're seeing a, a big block on a little street. And so what we will do um, is we go in and then we actually look at a couple of things. We look at grades, we look at the curves, and probably most importantly, because we, we already have a good feel for that, we'll look at driveways and we got to say, you know, we, we want to be at least 15 feet off of someone's driveway. And so I, I don't think there are a ton of driveways here to avoid. Some neighborhoods, it's hard to even get these things in because there's so many driveways and they all offset. I think we'll be okay here. But, but yeah, we want to be in that area because we know this is about the spacing that we're looking for. You know, again, here they're, they're slowing down for the all-way stop. Um, so that's why we don't have something closer to it. Um, but... Yeah, they're back up that hill. They have to slow down for, for the stop. Will there be a sign that says "speed humps ahead"? Because when they come around that yeah. small curve, it's wide. Yeah. So the question is is about signage. This is a pretty standard layout, and Indot has been pretty adamant. They're pretty aggressive on on the signage. So whenever streets come in, they want everyone who might encounter these from one of these side streets to see a sign. So in this case you would have signs, double signs for both of those. So you, every one of them will be, will be very well marked. This is the striping pattern that they have that is reflective. There's a lot of tree cut canopy. It's pretty street. And so I, I imagine, I don't know if there's lighting there or not. I didn't pay attention. So it may get some kind of dark uh, at night. And so, yeah, those will, those will shine brightly uh, when they're at nighttime with the headlights hitting them. 
both. Yeah, there's a there's a chemical, there's a there's a uh, an epoxy that goes underneath them, and then there are uh, steel pins that go down through the top of them as well. We've had really good experience from a, a maintenance standpoint. We've had some of these. Our oldest ones have probably been out close to 15 years now, I'd say at this point, and they're they're still holding up really well. So it's it's a good product. We have the same vendor that has supplied all of these, and that's how we know how these are going to perform. It, if you go out to some other place and look at these, and we had this over in a project over near Radnor Lake where, you know, we were proposing this, and just across the line in Forest Hills, they use a different product, and they said, those things are terrible. We don't want those, and we had to convince them this, this is not what they use there. This is a different product, so you're absolutely right. You know, we can we can provide you places. Madison may be the closest one to you, but yeah, you can you can certainly find this exact product that we have put down, and uh, if you can't, let us know, and we can certainly point you in that direction because we do want you to to feel it and try it. Alert all these people, and how far up do you go? Because everybody I talk to, and I talk to a lot of people, are for this, and if they don't have a notification in okay. their mail, they're probably not going to know to go online and vote for. It. So a question about the, the, the voting and balloting process. So uh, as has been alluded to, this is a big change for the program. If, you're, if you haven't known what it's like before, that's not, not that big of a deal to talk about that, that information, but it really is. We've, we've always asked for 70% of all of the property owners. This is a very short street and y'all could probably get it done. You're probably organized, but you think about some of these streets, they're, they're, they're huge and they're all the people and, and landlords and all those things. So what we do now is a balloting process. This is a snapshot of what we would use. So we, we're going to use Kennedy from Greenfield to Stratford. Anyone who lives along that street or their property touches the right of way of Kennedy. There's about 24 or 25 properties. We know who you are. We're, you're the ones we sent the cards to. With the exception of we send cards to the property owner on file. So if someone from California owns one of these properties, we're sending a postcard to California and they were invited to be here tonight, uh, and, and they will be invited to vote. Uh, that's how we do it. And so we don't get a lot of response from that. And that's one of the, that's one of this, this idea that the people that respond is just like a normal election, national election. If you respond, we count your vote. If you don't, we don't hold that against everybody else who did respond. If, if, if I may expand, I'm just, just, Jeff just said it exactly right. But in a nutshell, if we have 10 people, if we have 100 houses, hypothetically, 100 houses that are sent mailers to, if 10 people respond and seven of them say yes, then we're moving forward and we don't care about the other 90, okay? And this is true in places like Emmett Avenue. And RD. This is places where these are places where we have a hundred plus homes. With with this particular stretch, we have a small amount. But if we get seventy per sixty seven percent yes, it's a done deal. And I believe we're going to have that in this particular stretch. It's a small stretch. And if for some reason while you're out knocking doors, or if you are not knocking doors and you have concerns about it, I will join you. I will. You don't want other people on the street that live in the neighborhood that even voice your opinion. You just want those. You can voice your opinion, but it doesn't count. You have to put in your address. You have to put in your address. And so, and here's the thing: is that I think there's a hundred thousand people across the city that want traffic to slow down. But if it's not their street, okay, we can't so take into this question. consideration. So unless I live in that yellow car, I'm going to go to town. You don't that's get a right. vote. We don't send you a ballot. There's no opportunity to vote. Hey, hey, I, hey, I, hey, I, I will say, say, go ahead. Real, real, one addition, one addition, if I may. If you're interested in what these speed cushions look like, the, the nearest place, and it's one street outside District 7, if you drive north on Gallatin Pike, and you turn right on Neely's Bend Road, and if you turn left on Idlewild Avenue, there are a number of streets called Idlewild. The very first street on the left called Idlewild is Idlewild Avenue, and between Harrington and Harris Street, you will find these speed cushions. Please check those out. I'm going to repeat that. 
Gallatin Pike to Neely's Bend Road to Idlewild and between Harris, right around in there. I, I've forgotten. I don't remember it by road there. But that is what a speed cushion is. And that's what we're talking about where try it with your car. And if you drive an ambulance or a fire truck, take that over. And if you don't catch a ride with a fire truck, firefighter or an ambulance driver, check them out, y'all. These things work and they're the right size and they make the difference. And when they work here, we're going to see that it puts people where we want them to be driving their cars. And then we're going to address those streets if there are other streets that are impacted, which is a big question. We need to first address the street that has been applied for, that has been analyzed by engineers, that has been approved for this. There are over 400 applications in this city. This is one. We got an award right here for this one. We could say, nope, I give up, and they'll go on to the next one. Or we could say, yes, let's get the X number of people that we need, and let's get it done. And then guess what? We can move on to the next one, which the very next one in line, and quote me on the Internet for this, quote me everywhere. I've said it before. That out of the 24 awards that were just given, the 25th is McAlpine. Somebody always has to be the runner-up. The runner-up happens to be in our district. Let's get this one done so we can get the next one done. And then if you have a concern about the next one, let's turn in the next one and we can get that one done. The fact that we've gotten three out of 24 this time is really incredible. We have a problem here and the city is addressing it. I think the solution tonight is the right one. I think you've given excellent feedback about the turns at Greenfield and at Stratford. And I think that that's going to help the engineers come back. And in our second meeting, they're going to bring us a proposal that we believe is the right solution for us. And then we're going to, if you have feedback, we'll change it then. But if that's the right solution, you believe it's the right solution, let's just get to yes and let's get it in place. I'm tired of folks being put in harm's way because of our streets being unsafe and unwalkable especially here around Dan Mills, near Dan Mills, on a cut through to Dan Mills, folks that need to slow down. Please support what they put forward and thank you for your feedback on it. The balloting process, as I started out up here before I went on that big old soliloquy, um, the balloting process is so much improved from what it used to be. Two thirds of the people who answer is so much better than 70% of the people who own property. Oftentimes we can't reach those absentee landlords and they don't live there. They don't know that it's a problem. But if you respond to the survey, you're quite likely to know that this is a problem and you're quite likely to say, I approve. And we don't make you go door to door anymore. So that's, that's, that's even better. That's better. And in a lot of neighborhoods, that's, that's really critical. And so, um, you know, Metro handles that. The only other thing I would add to that is uh, typically, uh, I mean, the, the the rules are a six-week balloting period. This one could set the uh, this one could could change that in that if if you got if we get two thirds of all the property owners in this neighborhood, I think that's very doable. I don't know why we would keep it open six weeks. We could actually close it earlier. Once we met that threshold, there wouldn't be any reason to just hold it. But so good, good question about once once that ballot comes in, if it's if it's approved, um, at that point we order the materials. Ordering the materials, of course, it's it's, it's supply chain. Everything's supply chain, right? So we're 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 somewhere between six, maybe up to ten weeks, just to get the rubber in. Uh, that's going to put us. We were doing some thinking about this. A lot of you neighborhoods are are you know kind of right here and maybe on the cusp of of moving towards this. If we're in the winter time, when it comes time to implement, you know, colder weather, we're after November. They're not paving anymore. They're not striping. The company that does all of our striping also puts these in, so it could 
turned out to be a really good time to where we just roll that right in, keeps them busy during the winter, bolting in speed cushions for us. So that's kind of what we're targeting. Uh, it won't take long with the contractor. You know how long it takes to get something under contract with Metro if, if Metro has to purchase. So this contract's already on board. They're ready to go to work. It's on call. We just give them a, a work order. So. But it, it is a number of weeks after that ballot comes in for us to order the materials and, and get it all ready to go. <laughs> Any other questions or concerns? We don't have anybody who has finished the ballot yet. The first one under this new, the first one under this new process. The question is, how will we know and communicate that? Um, the first one under the new process is over in East Thompson Lane. They're about three weeks in. They, they're going to close in the middle of September. Um, I'm, I'm kind of hem hawing here because we haven't been through that. Uh, so we, you have an applicant here. Uh, it, it, it's Carrie. Is it, you're one of them, and there I, th I think there may be a couple of other names. We have. We will typically work through um, the applicant and, and, of course, the council member. So that's the best way we have. You know, we don't have all y'all's contact. Uh, if you if you want to kind of stay in the loop, um, we did this in Sylvan Park, you know, very organized, very uh, interested in what's going on. Feel free to email me, and then any updates that we have, I'll, I'll send that out to the group if you want to. I don't think there will be much uh, other than, you know, Cards make cards are going to plan to go out, you know, this week or whatever. We try to give you a heads up on, you know, you, the card should be hitting your mailboxes in the next few days. We haven't been because if we have to do that with every neighborhood, what, what's happening is we've got we've got two classes of neighborhoods that go back about a year and a half. I think it's two class. I mean, we got like 40 neighborhoods that we're trying to transition from that petition process, which so many of them are like lit and burnt. They've stalled out. They, it just takes forever. They didn't, they weren't able to accomplish that. We're trying to transition from them and say, okay, let us, let us take it back over and let us try this new petition process. So we're trying to, I mean, new ballot process. So we're trying to take a bunch of them from there to there. So we're, we're in a ton of neighborhoods right now, so we just don't have time to update and let you know how things are going. To that point, are we able to close it within the six week period if we have 100% or uh, if, if let's hypothetically say we've, I guess the only way we'd be able to close it is if we have heard from 100% of the property well, I, owners and, and, that, and that may be, in the majority or not, but unless we've received responses from 100% well, of Well, I think the, we just need two thirds of the property owners to close that response, early. Yeah. got it. And, and this, is a, this is an exception, so we can kind of walk. I mean, it's yeah, a it great is. question by the community, and I don't know that we haven't been through this yet. I think it's a very unknown answer yeah. because we'll see how it pans out in different areas. This happens to be a very small street as compared to others. And so we may have a really quick success here. I don't want to jinx anything. No. We may have a very quick success right here and, and be able to get it done. On the other hand, there's other areas where we also may be able to get it done based on how, even though it's larger. But I think that, that this is a great way to understand how that process with the number of works. Yep. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Thank is not part of this project. That corner at Greenfield and Kennedy is awful. I mean, that whole corner of Greenfield, is, there are people sliding off and hitting mailboxes. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. At least uh, every month. Is there any, and I know it's outside of this process, is there any kind of, of engineering way to deal with that? Maybe I, I didn't take a I didn't take a real close look at that, and we will as part of this. And if and if we can um, couch that in as part of the speed control, and it sounds like it is. I think that's a, a good observation. You know, I think it's, I did that in the application. You probably did. As, as traffic turns onto it fast, I mean. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean that happens in Howard and Kennedy. I think these cushions should control that, but I now have like yeah. I live on that corner and I. Can't and that yeah. And that's what we try to convince people of. When these go in, it's kind of a different street, you know. And and we're that's why when we start, we we're not trying to do things at every little spot because we know if we space these things through here, 
traffic has slowed down through the entire corridor and you know you don't a lot of those little issues at individual locations kind of go away when someone is filling out the ballot online do they have to have an email address because my neighbor does not have an email address good question the question is if someone does the ballot online do they have to have an email address they do not however they do have to be able to access the internet I can take care of that. okay you can do it we give you a, so we give you the card looks like this yeah. there's a qr code that takes you straight to this balloting page we also give you the link we also give you a phone number if you can't do any of that and need to talk to someone say i don't know what you guys did. i don't know what this little funny picture yeah. You can call someone and they'll, and they'll, <laughs> I'd probably, probably be me. They'll walk you through the process. They'll do the vote for you. When you get this card, you're going to have a little unique ID number down here uh, that, that lets us know it went to the right place. So you need a name, you put your address, and you put that, that code. That's all you need. Yeah, you don't need an, you don't. They won't get the vote. They won't get to vote. It's the property owner. Yeah. And it, and it goes to the owner's address wherever in the world that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. don't have any input then. They do not. But they could get it from the owner. They could have to them. Sure. Okay. They, can, they can say, hey, landlord, this is coming. Please vote yes. We really need it. I, we've had a lot of discussion. There's there's pros and cons both ways. It's a, it's a valid point. I agree with Terry about I live on Greenville. This morning I stood at my driveway watching a car like this. I mean, I, I don't have a radar gun. Sure. I know what it looks like to drive and I know they don't. Yeah. I would say the split car was probably doing 50. And so um, there was a car ahead. So the brakes went off. Um, the car turned in the driveway and barreled down again. They barely, I, I stood there thinking, I'm going to have to call 911. Barely made it around the curb and stayed on the road. But last night I was standing right at Kennedy and Howard, and I watched the car turn, and he was coming from Riverside Drive which was a sharp turn, turned in there. By the time they got to Howard, I don't, I just don't even know. I can't even yeah. estimate it. Yeah. Like on that. Kennedy. Yeah, right, on Kennedy. I mean, it's just, uh, it's not like they're on the road. Uh, and and there's, there's trees right there? I mean, I don't understand. Right, there's trees. Yeah. There's trees right yeah. the I know. Uh, so, yeah. I, you know, I agree. I don't know. I mean, maybe one day that day or they may hit it once, but I don't think they'll do it again. Yeah. All right. I think, I think, are there any, I know that we could sit here and I will tell you that truly, truly traffic calming is the number one issue that I see and I hear about in our district. And I have not only the plan of getting four projects recently, three projects in the immediate past, not only do I have that coming, but I have other things coming like enforcement and reporting of enforcement. Too often in the past, our officers have pulled over people who are not, people who happen to have black and brown skin and the police happen to have pulled them over. And so what I'm very concerned about is who are we pulling over and who are we giving tickets to? Well, I wanna know how many times are we pulling over people and how many times are we giving tickets to them? I've noticed, by the way, police on Gallatin Pike lately. And also, this is really, really, really anecdotal. I was on Gallatin Pike yesterday and I was the fastest car and I was driving 37. And I can't tell you how happy I was about that. We're seeing improvements. Each one of us, the very best thing we can do is drive responsibly. And I don't mean to sound like a particular person who said personal responsibility about COVID, but truly, 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 the very best way we can slow people down is by slowing down ourselves. And I get passed on roads with double yellow lines. You're going to see things like brush being removed from in front of signs. 
brush being removed from the right of way on our street. You're going to see new signs, cleaner signs, more signs. In some places, I'm going to ask for stop signs and the city's going to tell me no. And in some places, I'm going to finally say traffic and parking commission, yes. But I also want you to understand that when they do say no, and it's correct that they say no, that there are actually correct reasons why they say no. But we're going to have a plan for this community that is going to make people understand that we're not going to have a head-on collision in the turning lane on Gallatin Pike again. We're not having it. We're not having people not given the right of way when they're walking down the street. We're not having people pass each other on any street, let alone a street with a double yellow line. I, this has all happened to me, folks. I've lived here 23 years. I've seen it happen, and I know it's happened to you. We are going to fix this. It takes each one of us. And traffic calming, neighborhood traffic calming projects are a wonderful tool that are a part of it. And we have a tremendous amount of applications on file. I want more applications on file. We've got to keep doing this. We've got more streets that need this. I really appreciate everybody showing up tonight. This is our third meeting this week about traffic calming in District 7. We're doing the right stuff, y'all. Keep it up and let's make sure we get this implemented and thank you for your support as we do it. And I think at that point, Jeff, I know you want to go ahead and be the guy that wraps it all up. Hey, that's a, that's and a I'm wrapping very it fitting up. close. Uh, let's just wrap it up for the folks online. Thank you all for joining us online and thank you all especially for being here in person and your participation tonight. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you.